G'day, I'm Mark Hoth and welcome to Swift Almanac, where we teach you the basics of Swift in 10 minutes or less. Today's lesson is access controls. Access controls are an internal security feature which restricts access to portions of your code by other applications or other areas of your code. So let's have a look at access controls in 10 minutes or less. So access controls are an internal security feature which restricts access to portions of your code by various internal and external programs. It's used when we want to restrict access to classes, structures, properties such as variables or constants, or methods and functions. So in this way, it's a lot like a security system. If you're an administrator, you can access everything. If you belong to a group, you can access some things. And if you're a guest, you have minimal access. Importantly, access controls are a hierarchy, so in general, lower level access is unable to access higher level features. There are four levels of access control. The most open is called open or public, and that means that anywhere within your app, those features can be accessed, and if your app is saved as an external framework, then people can import those features and access those externally as well. The most common Okay, there are four levels of access controls. The most open is open or public, and that can be accessed from anywhere, an app or an external framework. Internal access control is available anywhere within your app or program that you're developing, but it wouldn't be accessible outside of your application, such as an external framework. The next restrictive control is file private. And anything that's marked as file private can only be accessed within the same source file that defines the entity, be it a class structure, property, or method. And finally, private. Private is only available within the enclosing declaration and extension of that declaration. So let's have a look at an example. If you're developing an app, the default access level is internal. As you will mostly be writing apps that are completely self-contained, if you don't specify anything, then the access level will default to internal. So there's no need for you to write internal class, some internal class. It will be inferred automatically by the compiler. Now within this internal class, we can have a variable called some internal property, which is going to be an integer, and then we can have functions, and in this case, it will infer this function as being internal, some internal private method, and then we can further restrict functions, or variables for that matter, but in this example, functions, we can have a file private, and some file private method would only be available within this source file, and then we have a private func, some private method, and that will only be available within the class. Now, if we're developing a framework, we need to declare the public facing interface as public or open. That is, external applications will want to be able to see some variables within our framework or some functions or methods within our framework, which allows them to access the framework itself. But there's other information that you will want to keep internal to the framework that won't be visible to developers who are calling your framework. And you can do that by using internal, private, or file private. Okay, let's look at implicit declarations. If you make a class open or public, or internal, by default, its members, the properties, methods, initializers, or subscripts, will be internal. If you want to have any other access control, you need to specifically declare it, such as public, file private, or private. If you make a class private or file private, by default, its members will be private or file private respectively. So for this file private class, if we declare a method, by default, it will be 
file private. And if we want to make it private, we need to ex explicitly declare that. If we declare a private class, then all functions and properties, or all methods and properties, uh, will be private by default. Now, if you use unit testing uh, and you have a unit test target, you need to mark the import declaration as at testable. This allows the testing target to access all the control functions regardless of where they occur. So it's a general override facility. Tuples cannot be given an access control. It is deduced as the minimum level of its constituent components. Function types must be declared as the minimum type of the parameters and return types that it is made up of. So if we have a function, now that would be internal, and it returns a tuple, some internal class, some private class, and then we do stuff here then that function is, and, and we, we get the error here, uh, is, is not going to work because internally uh, it, it's unable to access some private class because internal is uh, greater than the, the return values here. So what we need to do is we need to declare this as private, uh, which allows access to everything and then of course we would need to um, return uh, return a value in order to uh, make it work but let's simplify things And now our private function is going to work correctly. Well, we made it again. That's it for access controls. Hopefully now you have a complete understanding of the Swift access control scheme and when to use it. If you have any questions about the tutorial, then please leave a comment below or hit me up on Twitter at Swift Almanac. Please subscribe to the channel. It's free. And check out our website at www.swiftalmanac.com. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Cheers.